Okay, follow me on this. Recently, we've suffered a huge loss to the terrorists who unleashed murder and mayhem in San Bernardino, California. In addition, they've been successful in dividing the country on how we should think about this. Now, my last video about a horrible terror attack, which was not that long ago in Paris, dealt mostly with you know, dealing with this in a spiritual and a personal, emotional level, how, how you should approach it in your own life. And I think all of that's still valid, despite what certain newspapers might tell you. Side note, guys, if you're trying to separate people from their faith, you're doing what the terrorists are doing. So just try to remember what side you're on here. So if you're looking for that sort of discussion, link's in the description. Everything I said about Paris is true about San Bernardino and any other kind of horrible event that goes on. But for now, I want to talk about what do we do with this. On one side of things, you have a huge backlash against the Islamic community in general. And to some extent, I think political correctness in general, because people feel like we haven't been able to talk about this in certain terms due to political correctness. And therefore, we've let all this sort of thing happen. People are starting to look at things like it's an Islamic problem as opposed to a terrorist problem. On the flip side, there's a backlash against that backlash, which is, hey, you know, you've got that Christian who was shooting up a Planned Parenthood, so why don't we start bombing the Vatican? Of course, the main problem is everybody's reacting emotionally right now, and they're not thinking through things. So let's move forward, shall we? The guy who shot up the Planned Parenthood, whose name I will not give glory to, we're not, I don't do that with people who kill people, they're just that person who won't be named, is actually a radical religious person, to the extent that he's probably quite simple. This is a simple-minded attack. He's thinking, they're killing babies in there, I can save the babies. Which, if you shoot up a Planned Parenthood, all that happens is, A, you commit exactly the sort of crime that you say is wrong, making yourself a hypocrite. B, you make the entire pro-life movement look like a bunch of crazies. And C, the women who are going to have abortions that day at that clinic now have to drive an extra couple miles. This is not helpful. People, please stop doing this. This battle is going to be won in hearts and minds, and I think we're on track to do that if we would stop making ourselves look silly. Thank you very much. But note something here. There isn't a large, well-funded, heavily armed movement of people like that. On the radical Islamic side of things, you have almost the same problem. Where some would say, I'm saying, now this gets a little bit gray here, so follow me. Some would say that these radical Islamists are having a simplistic and warped interpretation of their religion. Whereas other Islamists, and some of them are high-ranking Islamists, are saying that this is the correct interpretation. I'm not an expert in Islamic law. I don't know. And since most Americans aren't experts in Islamic law, um, assumptions are being made, and this is becoming a problem. On a practical basis, you cannot ban all Muslims from coming into the country. Any more than you can ban all Catholics or ban all Hindus. And I think we've proven that a terrorist isn't going to have a problem with lying when they're trying to get into the country. Trying to ban Muslims is just about as useful as trying to ban guns. They're just going to be a different illegal pathway to get there. And if you're willing to kill people, you're willing to do pretty much anything else that's illegal. Now, you can't ban people from Syria. You can ban people from Afghanistan or Pakistan if you feel like there is a strong chance that you will be getting terrorists from that country trying to get into the country. And Jimmy Carter did that with Iran back in the late 70s. Was it useful? I have no idea. Again, we have open borders. Does it really help? Now, we went a decade without having anything like this happen during the War on Terror, which we called the War on Terror. Notice that since we've claimed the War on Terror is, oh, that's all done with, that's just passed, it was overblown, it was this and that, now we're starting to have problems. If you really want to look at, well, how can we prevent uh, these sort of events from happening in the country, I think we need to look to the past, to the recent past, and say, when we had boots on the ground, and we had control over Iraq and control over Afghanistan, they could not organize like this. Veterans, if you ever wondered if what you were doing was protecting the country, now you know it was. With that presence in the Middle East, they had to deal with it, and they couldn't spend their time trying to deal with us over here. The one thing that was never discussed, and I guess we could talk about it now because it's, it's pretty much a moot point, did anyone ever notice what a strategic value Iraq was? Never mind the oil, I don't think we ever got any oil. 
but it was dead center in the middle of everything and with our presence there everyone around had a tiptoe no not so much tiptoeing no now do we have to put boots on the ground to solve this problem i don't know i that's above my pay grade the one thing you don't want to do is tell people that that's not on the table it should always be an option the reason is, if it's an option, then the enemy has to prepare for it. Perfect example, if you've ever played StarCraft, the new StarCraft, StarCraft Wings of Liberty, the last level you get to choose, based on your actions in the game, whether or not you have to defend against a ground assault or an air assault. So you don't have to defend against both. You could put all of your effort into defending against either a ground assault or an air assault. And it makes it that much easier. You have to defend against both, now you've got to split your resources. And it takes a lot more resources to defend against both. If we say we may put troops on the ground, even if we have no intention of ever doing it, they've got to bunker up. Because if we did roll in, then they're in serious trouble because we're going to win that. And you can say, oh, well, they'll just fade away and they'll go, they'll go back to, you know, not being a terrorist and they'll hide for a while and they'll go back to, you know, working at their regular everyday jobs until they see an opportunity to be a terrorist again. Well, isn't that not a bad goal? Get everybody back into hiding as opposed to plotting? No, I'm no General Patton. I'm not a strategic genius. I don't know exactly what we should do militarily here, and I'm not claiming that. But I do think we have to start thinking in terms of what do we do strategically, militarily, to solve this problem. And we have to think about it in terms of our army against their army and not Christians versus Muslims or anything like that. There are a lot of Muslims, the majority of Muslims, who just want to go about their day and not kill anyone. Grouping the regular Islamist with the radical Islamist runs the danger of radicalizing everybody, and then you bring yourself about exactly what the radical Muslims want. World War III. But we need to take them seriously. We need to take ISIS very seriously, and we have to think, all right, look, political correctness aside, what needs to be done here? And if we don't want to do that, then we have to say, all right, well, what are we willing to sacrifice as we let them exist? This is not going to be good. When 9-11 when happened, I said, we're going to be in a war for 20 years. And it's probably going to be longer than that. Because we're almost going to have to go into every single country that has a radical Islamic government base and turn that government into something like that resembles a democracy. Not an easy task. There's no easy answers here, people. But the last thing we can do is turn against each other. Treat the problem as a problem. Treat the forces of ISIS as the forces of ISIS. Let's not generalize and make this Americans versus Americans. Yes, there are Americans in ISIS. Let's not make assumptions and drive more Americans to ISIS. Something to think about.